crystals is one of the basic problems in the study of solids. The exact mechanism whereby crystals grow has been a puzzle to scientists ever since the crystal and nature of matter was first discovered. One of the major problems of growth that the scientist has attempted to understand is the ability of a crystal to grow in solutions with very low supersaturation. This problem has been solved by hypothesizing that a particular kind of defect called a dislocation occurs in crystals. This movie describes the nature of these dislocations and the role that dislocations play in the growth of crystals. Ordinarily, a crystal grows by the addition of molecules to steps on its surface. Imagine that each of these men is a sugar molecule dissolved in water. The block is a sugar crystal growing from the solution. The molecules join the step on the block one at a time and the crystal grows. As more molecules join the crystal, the step advances to the crystal edge. Thereafter, under normal conditions, the growth must stop since there is no longer a step where additional molecules can be added to the crystal. Those that strike a completed face do not stick. On the other hand, if the crystal contains a kind of defect called a screw dislocation, a step will extend part way across the surface. This partial step will never disappear. The imperfect crystal can continue to grow. The work of Dr. Charles Frank at the University of Bristol led to the concept that crystals cannot grow under ordinary circumstances unless they contain screw dislocations. Here is a block of rubber forming a greatly enlarged model of a crystal. Each cube, outlined by the white lines, represents the position of a molecule. These positions form a set of parallel planes. The crystal model is now cut from the side to the center, sheared along the cut, and then stuck together again. Notice that the model is visibly distorted only near the end of the cut. The disturbed region along the end of the cut is called a screw dislocation. The crystal is now composed of a single layer of molecules. It is no longer possible to complete the layer. It is no longer possible to eliminate the step. If now, molecules join the step all along its length, the step will tend to advance. But the end of the step at the screw dislocation cannot move and this holding back of the step's end requires the step to become curved. As more molecules join the step, it winds itself into a spiral. After the spiral is formed, additional growth of the curved step merely causes the spiral to rotate without further change in form. This mode of crystal growth is quite general and can be observed with little difficulty. Here, some cadmium iodide is being added to water and dissolved at about 70 degrees centigrade. This microscope is equipped with a hot stage, heated by an electric current, which is controlled by the variable transformer at the left. A drop of the cadmium iodide solution is placed upon the hot stage and a cover glass is placed over it. The electric current to the stage is reduced and the stage allowed to cool to approximately 30 degrees centigrade. Upon cooling, the solution becomes supersaturated and cadmium iodide crystals precipitate and grow. The microscope is focused on the solution and a movie camera is placed above the eyepiece. A cable is attached to the camera so that time-lapse movies may be taken. The motor drives a cam that determines the interval between the time-lapse exposures. This portion of the movie was photographed at one frame every two seconds. You are seeing the action accelerated by a factor of about 50. Here you see a growing crystal. Molecules are being added to the advancing spiral step. As the step advances, the spiral rotates. 
the crystal grows thicker. The step ends at the spiral center at a dark spot in the upper part of the crystal. A step cannot stop on a crystal surface unless there is a dislocation at the place where it stops. There must be one or more dislocations at the dark spot. Actually, the steps on these crystals are many molecules high, and the end of a step requires a whole clump of unit dislocations. Here you see the slow advance of one layer of crystal over another. Each layer is slightly higher than the preceding one, and the crystal grows in thickness. The crystal is also growing edgewise. There is always present a step on the surface, and this step allows the crystal to grow. If the crystal did not contain screw dislocations, the step would grow out of existence. Then the growth could not continue except at very high supersaturation values. The camera focuses here on a large crystal. It looks like a terrace of rice paddies in Japan. Two screw dislocations may produce a right-handed and a left-handed spiral step, which interact to form closed loop steps. Thus, one layer is produced over another layer in a closed fashion. Dr. Frank also predicted this type of crystal growth from theoretical considerations. At about five o'clock on this picture, you can see the slight indentation of the loop as it begins to form showing its relationship to the spiral step structure seen in the earlier pictures. The height of these steps is not one molecule, but about 400 molecules. Here, it is infrequent that scientists are able to observe directly phenomena involving molecular movements and the effects that molecular imperfections have on the behavior of crystals. The movie you have just seen represents one of these rare opportunities. The growth of cadmium iodide crystals gives unusually strong confirmation of the existence of those crystal defects known as dislocations and of their role in the growth of all types of crystals. With further work on crystals in the General Electric Research Laboratory and in other laboratories throughout the world, a more complete understanding of the behavior of crystalline materials will be obtained.